Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Let the people of God say, Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, the topic of fear is certainly front and center thanks to today's readings. And it's an important topic at that because fear has the potential to interfere with our faith, our faith in Jesus. And anything that interferes with our faith is also going to interfere with our ability to love because as we are taught by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Galatians, our faith is active in love. So when faith is interfered with, when faith is diminished for whatever reason, so is our ability to love. And love is at the very center of our lives as Christians. The two great commandments from God tell us to love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. So when fear is threatened, when our ability to love is diminished, then our lives as Christians, fulfilling our purpose for our Lord, suffers. So it's important for us to get a handle on fear. And today's lessons give us what I would refer to as three recipes for fear and one remedy. Let's start with Elijah. Elijah was riding high. He had been in a big battle with the prophets of Baal and he had prevailed by the strength of God. But after he destroyed the prophets, Queen Jezebel, who was a follower of Baal, she's the queen of the northern kingdom of Israel, she threatened Elijah's life. And she said, I'm going to do the same to you. And she had the means, she had the ability, she had the power to do that. And as soon as his life was threatened, Elijah turned and fled in fear. He fled 300 miles from north in Israel to the south of Judah to the mount called Horeb, also known to us as Mount Sinai, the mountain of God, where the law was given to Moses. And there Elijah hid in a cave on the side of the mountain. I think what happened to him was that when his focus was on God, he was strong and mighty, doing the works of the Lord. But when Jezebel threatened him, his focus was on his weakness. And when he focused on his weakness, rather than the Lord's strength, he was consumed with fear and fled. When we focus on our weakness, as opposed to focusing on God's strength, that is a recipe for fear. Second example, the disciples in the boat. This is between three and six in the morning. They're in a boat on the Sea of Galilee and Jesus comes walking to them on the water and they see the movement and they see something that they think's a ghost. They don't know for sure what it is or who it is. And they cry out in fear. They're terrified, the scripture says. Their focus was on an unknown, something that was beyond their ability to know and understand. And in our lives, when we focus on the unknown, instead of The God who is known to us through Jesus Christ, that's when we are consumed with fear or fall prey to fear. 
Focusing on what we do not know as opposed to the one who we do know is a recipe for fear. Third example involves Peter. So Peter says, Lord, let me come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out of the boat to take the walk of faith. And he is walking in faith. And he is focused on the Lord until he notices the wind that's blowing strong against him. And as soon as his focus is taken off of Jesus and put on the wind which is circling around him, pushing against him, he begins to sink in fear. When we focus on the circumstances in life over which we have no control, that swirl around us day in and day out, and our focus is on these circumstances rather than on Jesus, then we are vulnerable to fear. Faith can suffer, and when faith suffers, we begin to sink. Three recipes for fear. Focusing on our weakness, focusing on the unknown, focusing on circumstances that swirl around us beyond our control instead of focusing on Jesus. That's when we get into trouble. So you know what the remedy is. Focus on Jesus. Psalm 145 verse 18 says, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. And today in the second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he quotes the prophet Joel and he says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The remedy for fear is to call on the name of the Lord who is near, who is present and who is powerful. Now when, when Peter was sinking, with fear in the Sea of Galilee, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus caught him and held him and safely secured him in the boat. The disciples in the boat, when they thought they saw a ghost and they were crying out in fear, Jesus spoke to them. The Lord was near and he assured them, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. The Lord is present in the time of need and very powerful to save. And then Elijah, when he was hiding in that cave on the side of Mount Horeb, the Lord was near. God came to Elijah in the sheer silence of a moment and spoke to him. And when the Lord's word came to Elijah, he was set free from his fear. God said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Go, I have work for you to do. You can't be held captive here by your fear. And on the strength of God's word to him, Elijah left that mountain and fulfilled the purpose God had for him, which was to anoint some kings and anoint a prophet who would succeed Elijah. The Lord is present and powerful, quick to save and reliable. I don't think it is too far-fetched to say that when a congregation like ours is in a transition, that we, we might be vulnerable to some element of fear. It's a time for being unsettled, 
It's very normal that we would be after a long time pastor departs from the congregation. It's a time when there are many unknowns for us. And as always, it's a time when issues are swirling around us that are beyond our control. So it is a time when all saints might well be thought of as, of as being vulnerable to fear. Maybe a congregation in transition is a recipe for fear, but the lesson today is that there's a remedy. And that remedy is to keep the focus on Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one constant in a life which is changing. He's the one constant when we're dealing with a bunch of unknowns in life, when there are circumstances that are bumping up against us that we have no control over. Jesus is the constant when we are afraid. Jesus is there, the constant presence and power of Jesus Christ. St. Paul said, the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. This word of faith that we proclaim and the word of faith that we proclaim is Jesus, that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over everything and everyone, and that includes your fear. Jesus is Lord over this transition. He is Lord over all that is unknown to us. It's known to him. Jesus is Lord over the circumstances in life that assail us over which we have no control. Jesus is Lord over our brokenness. I wouldn't be surprised if many in the congregation are f feeling like as a, as a body, we are not quite whole. We're missing an important piece. We're missing Bonnie, a key person in this congregation. But Jesus is Lord over our brokenness, over our sense of not being whole. He is Lord over our sinfulness. By his wounds, we are healed. By his death on the cross, he offers to us wholeness, well-being, and forgiveness. And Jesus is Lord even over death, for by his resurrection from the dead, he won the victory over death and open for us the way to everlasting life. Now, Jesus, Jesus is Lord, and that's a constant that we can count on day in and day out. I want to leave you with a memory verse. Do you prefer short memory verses or longer memory verses? I prefer the short ones. This is Psalm 56, verse 3. This is a nice prayer to pray to our Lord. When I am afraid, I will trust you. That's it. Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I will trust you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, trust Jesus who is present and powerful. Trust him no matter what the circumstances might be in your life, no matter what's going on around you. Trust Jesus. He is with us and he is for us. He's demonstrated that time and time again. He is quick to save us. And Jesus never fails. Amen.